third way you're known trumps everything is by your core values. Okay? So core values. What are core values? Well, that's, you might say an access to that is something like, have you ever, and a lot of people have, have you ever been in a situation where um, someone said something or they did something that was so off, so egregious, that you had to stand up and say something about it or you had to leave the room? You ever had that one? What got violated was one of your core values. You know that? Okay. So what got violated was one of your core values. So your core value is something actually that is shared by humanity. Okay. It's not something like my stereotype. Is, my stereotype is shared by guys who look like me. Okay. That's my stereotype. My reputation is shared by people in my community. Okay. And that's malleable. We can work with that. My core values are an access to all people. So leaders want to have the largest access that they can possibly have. So we take somebody who is a great leader, like Martin Luther King Jr., okay? Martin Luther King Jr., uh, an incredibly interesting man, Nobel Prize winner, a man who changed the world, and he changed the world profoundly. But back in 1963, when he stood up on, this, on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and he gave his famous speech, which was called? Everybody knows that. Okay, anybody ever see Martin Luther King and Jr. in person? How about on film or videotape or something like that? Some of you have, right? Okay. I knew there was something going on when my, uh, she was nine years old at the time, Juliet, my, uh, at that time, nine-year-old granddaughter, was home from school. And I said, why aren't you in school? And she said, it's Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. And I said, really? I said, tell me who Martin Luther King Jr. was. And she started to tell me about I Have a Dream. And as she told me the story, within about six or seven minutes, I was in tears. Now, I wasn't in tears because the story was sad. This is a great, inspiring story. I was in tears because I knew that Juliet, at the age of nine, that I knew that her grandchildren were taken care of in the area of fairness, in the area of equality, in the area of relationships with other people on the world because she had it and her children would get it and their children would get it. You get that? That's the power of core values. They get passed down through the generations. You are a set, a set of core values. By the time you've gotten to where you are, you are a set of very powerful values. And those values are what is the interesting thing apart you, about you. There's nothing interesting about you at all in your personality. Take you out in that area, yes? Yes. What's interesting, what's fascinating, what's powerful, what's effective about you is your core values and your ability to listen your values into existence as a leader in a group, okay? It doesn't matter how old you are. It matters that you do that. So your core values are what are effective and powerful about you. You're a set. Now, in that set of values, there, there may be 40, 50, or 100 values. They're all key for you. But in that set, there's probably two, three, four, something like that, that are the anchor points. That you say, that's it. That's it. That's the deal on me. When you're looking at me, you're looking at that particular value.